Having discussed resistors placed in series, we're now going to look at an alternate way of putting resistors together, and this is called parallel resistors in circuits. And you can see it already looks a little bit different. Each light bulb is now placed on a separate branch, and the fact that each light bulb is placed on a separate branch means that each light bulb is connected separately to the potential difference, meaning that there is a circuit for the first resistor, a circuit for the second resistor, and a circuit for the third resistor. Each uh, resistor is separately connected to the battery. Okay. And because each one is separately connected to the battery, if one light bulb burns out, it doesn't affect how the other ones react. If you add more light bulbs in parallel, again, they don't affect each other. So light bulbs in parallel are resistors in parallel are all on separate branches or separate circuit loops. Okay, so change in one will not affect the others. And here's one diagram of, or well, one setup of a parallel circuit. You can see that we have one circuit going through here, okay? And we can see that we have a second circuit going through here. So even if you cross out one portion of the parallel circuit, the other circuit is still able to complete its loop, so you still have the light bulb stay on. Now, in this conceptual model, we can again see the battery pump increasing the voltage or increase the potential difference of the charges. And the charges are flowing until they reach that break point between the two resistors. And notice what's happening to the charges when it reaches that junction. This is called a junction over here. The current splits. In this case, ignore this right there because resistor 1 is equal to resistor 2. So the current is splitting exactly in half. We have half the current going one way and half the other current going the other way. And at the bottom, both currents come together and they go back to their total. So assuming, let's say, that there was a total current of 10 amps coming out of the battery, then because both resistors are equal, then each resistor would receive 5 amps of current. And then together, the 5 and 5 will create 10 amps of current again. Okay? So it's very different than a series circuit, because in a series circuit, you only have one stream of, of charges moving. But with a parallel circuit, we have multiple streams. And because we do have multiple streams, we can say that the total current is equal to simply the, the individual currents all added up. Or basically the current in a parallel circuit is equal to the sum of all the currents. And we'll, But notice what variable does stay constant within parallel circuits. In this case, this is just another conceptual diagram with different resistors. And notice the potential difference will make up a number, let's say, is 8 volts. And as the current, again, goes to this junction and splits up into two separate streams, each stream of current falls down that same exact potential difference, that same exact height, meaning that this one fell 8 volts, 
after this one gained 8 volts in height. And this one also fell, had a potential drop of 8 volts as well. So each circuit loop is separately connected to the battery. And because each one is separately connected to the battery, each one has its own potential drop of 8 volts. Also note, in this case we have two different resistors. In fact, this one has three times as much resistance as the 10 ohm resistor. If you think about this logically, will current, would it rather go through the one that's high resistance or low resistance? And of course, the charges want to go where it's easier to travel. So the majority of the charges you can see are going through the 10 ohm resistor. Most of the current's going through there. In fact, because it's one third the resistance, it has three times as much current going through that resistor. While the other resistor, the 30 ohm resistor, would have one third the current. So if I were to, let's say, make up Again, a total current of 8 amps, then that means that we would have 2 amps go in one direction and 6 amps go in the other. And both would add up to the original amount. So it goes to I1 plus I2. So when we talk about the variable that remains the same everywhere in a parallel circuit, we are talking about the potential difference. So the potential difference in parallel circuits is the same everywhere. Or in other words, it's equal to V1, equal to V2, equal to V3. Okay. What is significantly different, however, from series circuit is how would we solve for the equivalent resistance of a sorry parallel circuit. You see, it's very different than series circuits. With a series circuit, the more resistors we added in, the more roadblocks were placed in the current stream. So the total current would slow down. But with a parallel circuit, if you think about it, if I add more and more resistors in, the more resistors I add in, That means the more charge I would have flowing out of the battery. And each additional resistor that I add in would generate its own brand new current loop, meaning that more resistors in parallel equals to more current from the battery. So in other words, as I add more resist as I put more resistors in, the total equivalent resistance is actually going down. Okay, because I'm getting more and more current. So because the total equivalent resistance is actually going down as I add more and more resistors in, the formula for solving for resistors in parallel is one over resistors in parallel is equal to one over R one plus one over R two, et cetera, et cetera. Or I could write 1 over resistors in parallel is equal to the summation of all the resistors, the inverse of all the resistors. Now, to make sure that that makes sense to you, let's do a quick practice question. We have a 10 ohm, 15 ohm, and a 5 ohm resistor placed in parallel. We don't see the battery here. I mean, normally the battery would be down here. But to solve for this, we would do... 1 over resistance in parallel is equal to 1 over 10 ohms plus 1 over 15 ohms plus 1 over 5 ohms. Now, if you happen to be good at common denominators, go ahead and do it that way. In this case, the common denominator is 30. So this would be 3 over 30 plus 2 over 30 plus, one, plus 6 over 30, which equals to a total of 11 over 30. which means that the resistors in parallel is equal to 30 over 11 ohms.
and you could leave it as a fraction or as a decimal. And that would be the equivalent resistance for that point. However, if you are not so great at using uh, doing common denominators, you can use the calculator. In this case, if we just go back to our original numbers of 1 over 10 plus 1 over 15 plus 1 over 5, if you type that into a calculator, you end up with 1 over all the resistors is equal to 0.367. Now, but that's 1 over R. So if you flip it, so in other words, you divide it by, you 1 divided by that, and then 1 divided by this becomes RP. So the total resistors in parallel, again, equal to 30 over 11. Or in this case, it would be 2.73 ohms. Okay? So just remember, in parallel, you have to use the inverse of the resistors when you add them all up together. Now, this is a few pages in, but I also want to show you guys a quick shortcut in solving for the total resistance if you know that the resistors are all going to be the same. Now, with two 5-ohm resistors in parallel, notice, 1 over RP is equal to 1 over 5 plus 1 over 5, which is equal to 2 over 5, meaning that the total resistance is simply going to be 5 over 2. If I have three 5 ohm resistors, that will equal to 1 over 5 plus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 5, which is equal to 3 over 5, meaning that the total resistance is equal to 5 divided by 3. Hopefully you see the pattern here, mainly that if you have a specific number of resistors that are all the same, you simply divide the resistance of one of them by however many resistors you have. If I had five 5 ohm resistors, I don't know if it's four, but let's do five, one over five plus one over five plus one over five plus one over five plus one over five, that would equal to, well, the total resistance would be 5 over 5, which is equal to 1 ohm, okay? So whenever you know the resistors are all exactly the same, you just divide by the number of them. And you notice in each case, as we added more and more resistors, the total resistance decreased, okay? Simply because we're opening up more circuit paths, more currents flowing out of the battery. Question 15, though, is an interesting one to note. What would be happening to the brightness of each light bulb as more and more are connected in parallel? And the answer is nothing. Remember, one circuit loop has absolutely no effect on another circuit loop. Okay. So here's a good thought question. An engineer needs to create a 10-ohm and a 15-ohm resistor, but he doesn't have any. He only has 30-ohm resistors in stock. How can you use the 30 ohm resistors to create a resistance that he needs? Well, if you think about this, about the relationship between 10 and 30 versus 15 and 30, you might notice that, well, 30 divided by 3 is 10. So if we actually put three 10 ohm, 30 ohm resistors together, I'll draw it like this. This, the total resistance here, would be 10 ohms. If you want to create the 15 ohm resistor, I'll draw it like this now. Thirty ohms, thirty ohms, because they are the same, we just divide by two, the total resistance in this case would equal to fifteen ohms. Okay? Now let's do a quick practice question. The resistors are not the same this time, so we cannot just do a quick shortcut. We're going to have to actually use a little bit of math to solve for total resistance. 
We have 12 ohm and a 15 ohm resistor placed in power across a potential difference of 30 volts. So let's actually do this over here. I'll draw it out. 30 volts. And we have a 10, 12 ohm and a 15 ohm resistor. Okay. Now, just like with series circuit, we're, we're just going to draw an RVIP chart. In this case, I have two resistors. And we'll write total. We know that the first resistor is 12 ohms, the second resistor is 15 ohms, and my total battery is 30 volts. So we start off exactly the same, just like before we list all of our given. But the rules are different. In a parallel circuit, what variable stays the same everywhere? Of course, that's going to be the potential difference, because each circuit has its own separate loop. So that means it's going to be 30 volts here and 30 volts there. Remember, going across, we can only use the formula either R equals V over I, or P is equal to VI. And we're able to solve for I right away of the first resistor. So I is equal to 30 volts divided by 12 ohms, which in this case is equal to 2.5. Five amps. And when with the second one, 30 divided by 15 would be 2 amps. So that means that within here, I have 2.5 amps of current going. Within here, I have 2 amps of current going. And when they join up together at that junction, that means that the total current is going to equal to 4.5 now notice, I have two different ways of solving for the total resistance. I can either go across or I can go vertically. They both work. You just have to be careful about which formula you use. If I go vertically, I would use 1 over resistance in parallel is equal to 1 over 12 ohms plus 1 over 15 ohms. And the common denominator being 60, this would be 5 over 60 plus 4 over 60, which is equal to 9 over 60, which means that the total resistance is simply equal to 60 divided by 9 ohms. Or, if I had gone across, R is simply equal to V over I, and we take the total battery, which is 30 volts, divided by a total current of 4.5 amps, which would equal to 6.67 which is this exact same answer. And just like before, I can also solve for the power. Power is simply equal to V times I. So it would equal to, for the very first light bulb, it would be 30 volts times 2.5 amps, which would equal to 75 watts. The second one we could 60 watts, and the total, of course, would equal to 135 watts. Just like before, we can solve for the total amount of energy if we're given a time. And if we're asked about which light bulb happens to be the brightest, again, the brightest light bulb is the most power. And that's makes sense to us because we have less resistance in the first resistor, so therefore there's more current, and therefore there's more power. 